Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for Alpha 6 of Update 99 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. <laughs> Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we have hopefully the last Alpha of this cycle. That's right, after this week, hopefully next week, uh, assuming something doesn't explode or break horrendously, we will be moving on Update 99 to the main branch and it will be done. So, what do we have to finish off? this update well we have a whole bunch of new climbing goodies uh and i will talk a little bit later about how they are now actually available in taken hold so anton's putting on his wrist straps on his controllers here and let's dive right in so to start simple the first thing i wanted to mention is that there is now a modern climbing axe and this differs from our ice axe over here um, by the fact that the ice axe uses the physics based inertia system that i showed off before that some of you didn't like some of you who played with the first prototype of the climbing liked having to engage the trigger to be able to climb it makes it easier to speed run and to fling yourself and stuff so that's back now obviously they can both be active at once but it does allow us to pop like so you can't leave them in if you actually just drop and release them they will fall but it allows you to do cool stuff like lifting yourself up like this and releasing the trigger to pop which does allow you to do a lot of one-handed climbing with one of these axes so i understand why you wanted them back like this they are super fun Wee! Oh, <laughs> as i slam into a bottle Nicely done. So those are like that. Next up, let's take a look at our new climbing goodies. The first one, a little bit on the absurd side, is our plunger launcher. This is a four shot quote unquote grenade launcher that allows us to plant climbing points on any static surface. So you can pop one here. I love that sound. Uh, is that a little? Nah, that might be a little too far. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this in three. Those are probably. Oh no. We can just barely get it. Oh, got it. Whew, there we go. And up. Up we have it. Ah, celebratory. So this basically becomes a permanent climb point. I, uh, I don't have any way to clean up or remove these at the moment. I might make it so that the base can receive damage either from an impact or a shot to uh, pop them off and or destroy them. Still need to decide on that. But for now, they're just stuck there for good. Uh, but if you want, so if you want to uh, play around and make yourself a, a, a little temporary climbing course uh, with them, you can, uh, you can do so. <laughs> Who doesn't love that noise? Oh, that's fun. But the most exciting thing, the big thing that got a, uh, a whole bunch of work and effort uh, that I showed off on the Twitter is our grapple gun. This is a multifunction grapple gun. Check that out slick looking we have a cartridge for it which this is technically this is similar to the cartridge that a revolving shotgun has in that it it has two shots in it we can pop them out like this and actually take a look at the cartridge we can reload them it requires both be loaded in to function like so and we can do a couple things we can shoot it at the uh, wall you'll notice the the light goes green there when we're in range it will not allow you to fire unless you're in range for the first shot so we can say pop a rope down here like that and we can fire one up which as you can see i can fire this anywhere for the second shot let's see and whammo and get ourselves a nice two-point grapple rope oops here I am trying to be all clever and one hand fling climb. Let's just come on up here. Rope keeps going. And of course we can hold the touchpad and we can slide down 
that rope. Wonderful. So that's function number one, and that actually empties our cartridge. So we need to load a another one. The other function, which I think most of you will find a good deal more exciting, is that we can fire the first shot. We can click the 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 either the forward button. I always forget whether it's A or B on non-Vive wands, um, or up on the touchpad, and it will retract for us. Say we didn't like where we placed our shot, or we can click. Uh, bottom of the touchpad or whichever one of the rear. As I said, it's either A or B and wham, fling ourselves. Oh goodness, overshot. <laughs> Let's try this again. Ha! A little bit of air control. There we go. Wonderful. Pop over there. Whammo. Oh, I should get, oh, I should get a, this is best paired with a climbing axe. There we go. Now we're ready to go. One of the things that you'll notice about this is that it's not just about the grapple rope pulling it towards yourself, but the direction that you are pulling your hand in at the moment that you retract it allows you to change the direction. So if you pull it down, you'll actually pop into the air significantly more. I'll show you the difference here. So if I just stand on the edge and I pull myself towards this here without moving my hand, it'll just pull me straight here. If, however, I pull down, oops. Ah. Oh, ah. didn't get high enough. Let's try that again. If, however, I pull my hand down really sharply, as I do it, I will pop up here. Let's get up here. Now you will notice if the line of sight on the rope is broken by the environment, it will immediately retract. So you do have to be careful about that. Wonderful. Oh, so much movement ability. It is, it is a blast. <laughs> ah! Now, you'll notice there that I still fell. This does not redirect your velocity, it adds to it. So if you're already falling down pretty fast, it will not arrest your velocity. There are some limitations. Oops, too far. <laughs> I keep doing this to myself. So it requires some getting used to for sure. There we go. Perfect. Ah, so there you have it. There is our grapple gun, but wait, there's more. If we pop on over to the proving ground, we can see the other special feature of the grapple gun that I knew you were gonna ask for, which is, can we grapple Sosigs with it? And the answer is with the first shot, you betcha. If we fire at them with it like so, and our, our retract that would normally just sort of pull the dart back, we can, especially with our hand gesture, grapple them like so. If you hit a lower link, it won't be quite as effective because you're not pulling them by their center mass, but can still be quite effective. Oh As I drop my axe. Whack. Oh <laughs> Come on, Anton. There we go. Over the head. Wonderful. Or, of course, we can still grapple shunt off of the agent itself. I should probably make it so it also trips them when I do that. Because it does look kind of weird having them not move at all when I do this. Something, something, locomotion shooter. One last thing I thought I'd show off that went in, new toy category, is that the FAMAS F1 has been replaced with a new, a more accurate, nicer looking model. We can see our classic magazine here. Wham. Look at that. Nicer looking charging handle. Let's see, we can Alas, poor meat. move up one of those sights. 
get a tighter aperture. Pop that down. You can use this one as well, which, yeah, that's a slightly wider aperture. Good stuff. And because a whole bunch of you wanted it to go with it, we also have the FAMAS G2, which is Stanag magazine compatible. Wonderful. You'll notice there are no rails on it. That is because, you know what, I realized I did not actually pack in on the item spawner, the attachment, but it should be under our rail adapters. Unless, yeah, there it is. FAMAS rail, Picatinny rail adapter. Should be able to pop in here. Of course it can't because Anton messed something up. <laughs> Just imagine it connected correctly. I will get that fixed uh, before I actually push a build tonight. Why isn't, why aren't you? <laughs> failure. Anyway, let's jump. Ooh, arm swinger jump. I am just discombobulated today. Let's jump out of VR and talk about the other big changes that are present in Taken Hold uh, with this final alpha. Yo! So, what else is in this update? In terms of new content, there are 10 more seed progressions for the Northeast Dakota level. What that means, for those of you who don't know what the seed means, is that's an authored progression of those five hold points. When you set it to a specific seed, you'll always get that order of five holds, even though the supply points are going to be sort of boundedly randomly generated. So because of the fact that this map has 32 holds instead of 12 like the classic, I realized I could author 10 more sequences for it and still have them be pretty significantly different from each other. No hold appears in the same place in sort of one, two, three, four, five uh, between any two seeds. So that should hope keep that level, you know, fresh and interesting to play uh, for a longer period of time for you folks. Um, in terms of getting the new locomotion equipment in Taken Hold, you will notice that the object constructor store no longer has, for most characters, three slots. It has five. On the right is basically a slot I've designated as storage. Right now, it's only the backpack. Later on, there might be some other things uh, that would make sense to go there. And on the left is locomotion-oriented tools, um, grapple, plunger launcher, etc., and some other stuff I have planned uh, during the alpha cycle for, uh, for our next update. Update. So yeah, so that's in there now. Uh, I have changed the token costs for duplicating and upgrading magazines. Before it was one token to duplicate, two to upgrade, which was too cheap. People were way too easily sort of like grabbing a high capacity Stanag mag and just carrying thousands of rounds of ammo on them. So that has been fixed. Uh, it's now two and three respectively, which is still cheaper than it used to be for the mag duplication, um, but I think reasonable now relative to the costs of other high capacity weapons, a couple of which I have dropped down a little bit. I really do want to encourage use of secondary equipment, which is one of the reasons why I've dropped the cost of things like grenade launchers and grenades, um, so that you're encouraged to not just sort of always use one primary platform, but use a mixture of things. Um, there, uh, the no targets mode ha has been shortened uh, during the holds by 60 seconds. Um, so you're just standing around there in one point for less time. It sort of brings it in line with the total amount of targets you end up fighting uh, in the other modes. And I mentioned last week about how I wanted to really change some things about SOSIG perception. I have. I spent the first part of the first half of the week, really, uh, sort of re-engineering the way that SOSIG perception works from uh, the to in terms of acquiring new visual targets that they haven't already seen. Um, they have a sort of buffer now that gets that 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 something gets loaded into and sits in for a period of time relative to its visibility and distance before it actually goes into the SOSIG. Uh, so what this means is that at 200, 300 meters range, there should now be uh, a couple seconds before you actually see a SOSIG change state. Um, you'll also notice that things like suppression interrupt their ability to perceive new things uh, better. And suppression also has more of an effect in terms of their body posture and their aim stability. 
Additionally, aim stability for SOSIGs is based partially on what weapon they're holding. So any SOSIG who's using an unstocked weapon, like a pistol or some of the SMGs, will have worse accuracy, especially at range. Let's see here. Um, I have made quick belt sizes more consistent for high capacity magazines. That does mean that there's a lot of drums that will no longer fit in small quick belt slots and will have to be put in larger ones. I am going to add the ability to downgrade the capacity of a magazine in that station as well and taken hold but I have not yet gotten that in there. Um, so now I wanted to make it so that it's more of a trade-off now, because in real life, like you may wonder like, oh, there's tons of drum mags in H3. In real life, when you look at like soldiers with guns, drum mags are really uncommon. And it, it used to mainly be about reliability in many cases, but a lot of that has been figured out. Truth be told, people don't tend to use drums because they're bulky. They're not as efficient to carry around as a bunch of, you know, 20 or 30 round mags in most cases. And so I think it's important that that limitation in terms of taking up a large quick belt slot for a drum be represented here, that you're, that, that, that you're trading carrying another gun to carry a drum for a gun. So, so that's been made more con consistent across well over a dozen uh, different types of uh, drums and large mags. In terms of fixes, there's a whole bunch of uh, fixed assorted sort of holes and pathing things in the take and hold level. You will notice there are some new traversal pads, especially coming out of the area where the whiteout is more intense and you want to transition sort of over that mountain ridge to where the rest of the level is. There's now a couple more pads. Instead of having to like sort of go around like this, you can actually traverse over. Um, you'll just have to learn those paths and give them a try. So, so that's in there now. Um, the Stoner 63 LMG can now be loaded again. Custom MSA quality is now saved correctly. Uh, the Dardic revolver can no longer eject its uh, chambers by jerking the gun backwards. Whoops, it's still a revolver under the hood. Uh, and, uh, and the Mosin bolt breaking when you quick bolt in streamlined mode without having turned the safety off first and then released it has now been fixed. I, I, had, I thought I had fixed that problem, but I had only actually put the code in the standard control path area and not the streamlined one. So that is now fixed. Sorry it took so long. Whew. So that is about it. That is all of our stuff for this week's uh, Alpha. I hope you all have fun with the new locomotion tools and such. And uh, assuming that I can finish tuning everything up, I'm going to spend the next week just on bug fixes and polish uh, and getting this all ready for, uh, for going to main branch next week. So wish me luck. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Peace.